Hello, this video is a reminder of how to find the surface area of certain basic three-dimensional shapes. Now you don't need to watch all of the video, just skip ahead to the shape that you're interested in. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's start off with a cube. Now, here's some different cubes. Uh, see, the dice has got six faces, as you know. So, let's say if the edge of a cube has got a length of S, then the square faces will each have an area of S squared. You know how to find the area of a square. So, all together, because there are six faces, we're going to have six S squared. That's the formula for working out the surface area of a cube. Now, cuboids are similar. Here are some cuboids. You can see that the length and the width and the height are different. So, let's have a look at the surface area. If I unfold this cuboid here, you can see we have two rectangles the same size there, two the same size there, and two the same size there. So our formulas are going to involve the number two. And then we need to work out each of those rectangles, the opposite ones, which will have the same area, to make up that formula that you can see on the screen there. So that's the formula for a cuboid. A prism is a three-dimensional shape with straight edges and the same cross-section all the way through it. Like this, for example, is a triangular prism because anywhere I sliced along its length, I'd get that same triangular shape. And I guess this could be called an octagonal um, prism because it's got an octagonal cross-section. So how do we find the surface area of the prism? Well, basically, we find the area of the two ends, these two triangles in this case, and then we uh, think about the other faces. If I unwrap this, you'll see it actually makes a rectangle altogether, and the, um, the length of the rectangle is the same as the distance around the shape at the end of the prism. And of course, the width of the rectangle is the same as the length of the prism. So that's how you'd find that rectangle. So have a go, pause the video and have a go at finding the surface area of this triangular prism. Well, the way I would do it is say the area, first of all, is two lots of the ends. Well, in this case, they're triangles. And the area of a triangle is the half, the base times the height. And we're given the height as 1.35 meters. I'll write everything down in centimeters. So that's the two triangles, and now we have that unwrapped rectangle of the other three faces, which are going to each be 150 centimeters wide. Can you see 1.5 meters in the diagram? And then going around the triangle to see their length, it's those three sides added together. So, if I type all that into the calculator, well, actually, two times a half, I know that's one, so I won't even bother starting there. I'll start off with the 65 times 135, and then add on the 150, uh, open brackets, and then 65 plus the 239s, because two of the sides of the triangle are 39, 139 that is don't forget to close the brackets and i get 60,225 so because i've been working in centimeters the area will be in square centimeters now sometimes you're asked to give the answer to three significant figures so if this was the case the answer would be 60,200 centimeters square a cylinder is quite similar to a prism in that it's got the same cross-sectional area all the way through, in this case a circle. And as you can see, the way we would work out the area would be to add the two circles together and then try and figure out the distance around the curved surface area. So if I unfold it and show it to you as 
a rectangle if it's unfolded. And of course, that rectangle would have a length which would be the same as the circumference of the circle. That length there is the same as the circumference of the circle. And of course, the, the width of the rectangle is, is the length of the cylinder. The formula for a cone involves the, the radius of the circular base and also L, the length of the, the sloping side up from the perimeter of the circle to the, the point at the end of the cone. That's L. But you could also work it out using the vertical height or the perpendicular height from the base. We'll call that H. And that uses a bit of Pythagoras in order to work out what L is, as you can see. So there are two different ways of finding the surface area of a cone. Pause the video, have a go at using that formula for this one. And the way I would do it, of course, is begin with A for the surface area. And then we're going to multiply pi by the radius, which is 2.5. And that second 2.5 gives us the radius squared, which gives us the formula for the uh, area of the circle at the bottom. And then, because it's the vertical, the perpendicular height that we're given, we need to use this little square root Pythagoras theorem to work out the, the sloping side of that cone. So let's bring in the uh, calculator and type in pi multiplied by 2.5. I like to put a multiplication sign in front of the brackets, even though with algebra you don't write it down in your working. And then we have the 2.5 plus, get the square root sign in, do my 3.5 squared added to my 2.5 squared. And the answer will be, don't hold your breath, Oh, we need to close the brackets. 53.4. You can see it's a decimal that goes on forever. It's an irrational number because it involves pi. So we'll round it to 53.4. A lot of buttons to press, but there they all are. Those are the buttons that were pressed to get that answer. So 53.4 square centimeters to three significant figures. Now pyramids come in all shapes and sizes, but this formula here is for a square-based pyramid. And we'll say that the sides of the square are each of length S, and H is the, the perpendicular height above the, uh, the base. So don't get confused with the, the sloping height, it's definitely the, uh, the, the distance from the base directly up to the apex there. So, pause the video and have a go at this question here, and then start the video again to see if you get the same answer as me. So here we go, the area, which we'll call A, is equal to the side of the square squared, which is basically the area of the base, isn't it? And then it's multiplied by 2 times s, which is 100 in this case. The square root of s squared over 4 plus h squared, the height, which in this case is 80 meters. So we're working throughout in meters here. Okay, let's bring in the calculator and type in these figures. 100 squared plus two lots of 100, which I can do in my head as 200. Save a bit of uh, calculator power there, typing in the, uh, the simple answers. 100 squared divided by 4. I could probably work out that as well. And add on the 80 squared, giving us, oh, a number that goes on because of that square root sign. It's another irrational number, it looks like. So let's round it off to 
28,900 square meters. And that is two, three significant figures because I've rounded it. Yes, I know, an orange isn't a perfect sphere, but when I saw this demonstration, I couldn't help but have a go myself to see how good it worked. Because you see, if you take an orange and pretend it's a sphere, it's almost a sphere, and um, let's say the radius of the sphere is R, if we make some circles that also have a radius of R, and then we peel the orange, because the orange peel will be a representation of the surface area of that spherical orange. And we put the pieces of peel into the four circles that we've made. Remember, the circles have got the same radius as that sphere, that orange. Can you see that the four circles get filled up exactly, well, almost exactly. And that reminds me that the surface area of a sphere is four pi r squared, because pi r squared is the area of a circle. And there are four of them, four pi r squared. Isn't that a great demonstration? Hopefully that will help you remember it. So pause the video. Let's see if you can work out the surface area of this sphere here. Okay, it's very simple. It's just four pi r squared. And we know the radius is 35 millimeters. It says 4 pi times 35 squared. I'll bring in the calculator, type in the values, and let's see, we'll get 4 times pi times 35 squared is giving me, oh, in terms of pi. So let's change that into a decimal. Uh, which of course is an irrational number, so we'll need to round it to three significant figures. It looks like it's going to be 15,400 square millimetres, because we've been working in millimetres. Now, what about if we were asked to give the answer in square centimetres? How many square millimetres are in a square centimetre? Well, actually, there's a hundred of them, 10 by 10, because a square centimetre it's 10 millimetres wide and 10 millimetres high. So I need to divide that by 100 to get the answer 154 centimetres squared. Okay, how about a bigger sphere? Have a go at this and let me see if I can work it out. All right then, the radius of the Earth we can calculate if we're given the circumference, which we have been in the question, because 2 pi r, the circumference of a circle, we know is 40,000. So dividing both sides by 2 pi, we get a an expression for r. So let's put that into our formula, the 4 pi r squared, and type that into the calculator to find out the surface area of the Earth in, in kilometer squared. Okay, here we go, typing in pi, not forgetting to square this, and wow, big number, but I was expecting a big number anyway. So, let's see, in standard form, that's 5.09 times 10 to the power 8, or 509 million kilometers squared. Wow. Okay, now it's your turn to have a go at the online exercise. Don't forget to press the check button regularly as you're working through the questions to see if you're getting them right. And if you make a mistake, have another thing and correct your answer and then press that check button again. Don't forget to claim your trophy when you've got to the end. And there are lots more activities on the Transom website for you to have a go at to improve your mathematics and you can claim hundreds of trophies. So, what are you waiting for? Get going! Bye! You can find Transom Mathematics at www.transum.org where you're welcome to use all of the activities absolutely free. Or jump in with both feet and become a Transom subscriber.